Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I'm your host, Crimson Sin. And PCA. Be sure to check us out over on Twitter at C15 Podcast. So, on today's episode of All About the Orville Comments, we're going to be covering the comments on episode 4, Nothing Left on Earth Excepting Fishes. And we really liked this episode. Oh, it was really good. And we kind of got a little bit of a polarization because there's some people out there that really didn't like this episode. But um, we always start how this whole, if you're brand new and this is your first time watching one of these videos, we always start with the most popular comment and then we just work our way down. So, um, the first one, it's kind of like a joke. It's um, a, a pun. I apologize if I mess up any names, but uh, Jim Cole says, a little Netflix and krill. <laughs> the Netflix and chill. Oh, a little stupid. <laughs> Just a stupid <laughs> pun. The number one was a, number, it was a pun. He got it. You, you got the number he one comment. <laughs> so, uh, going He's on to the next clever. one. Uh, Day Free. Uh, STD, which for anyone who doesn't know, is Star Trek Discovery. May be cinematic and camera work, set design and lighting, but it should be mentioned it's airing on TV. The Orville, by comparison, is a TV show made for TV. As a result, while the camera work is less dynamic, it helps the viewer focus on the characters and switches back and forth between simple reverse shots where two sides of the discussion are pre presented. You're not always being distracted by new visuals, so you can focus on the dialogue. STD, by contracts, moved its camera a lot in season one, so if that's an episode of Drumhead was remade in STD, it would have dramatic zooms, hallway walks, and talk sequences, cameras and characters actually breaking the 180 rule, cuts, lots of cut edits, because it's shot like a movie in a setting that you want to convince you that it's a 360 degree of realism. As a result, the dialogue is less focused on because the visual design being elevated beyond the suitable for a small television screen, which is super true. Yeah. If you watch Discovery, it is cinematic in the way that it's shot. Like, like you said, is the camera's always spinning around. It's it, you get that weird shaky cam. You get all these dynamic angles, but at the same time, it, it takes you away from the characters. Yeah, but the thing that's interesting about that is that, but I think the visual works are amazing for Orville too. I mean, I'm not going to discard it, but you're just looking at it from a darker cinematic tone as opposed to the brighter and, Orville. And um, it's just in the I want to say the style. Mm -hmm. I don't think it. I don't think it has anything to do with um, money or budget wise. No, I'm just saying the tone. Yeah, yeah. just talking it's just, about the visual it's, tone. It's just how where you move the camera around. Yeah. And the Orville is shot yeah. like a television show. But I don't like the shaky cam on Discovery. Gosh, yeah, or like that is so annoying. There's I'm times sorry. where you think it's a POV. Like, yeah. is this from a character's point of view? But no, that's just the cameraman moving around. So weird. It's dumb. It's off putting. It's just off putting. But it's me. that weird kind of make it look like yeah. a big sci fi movie. But again, I don't know how much that your shame is going to hold true when it comes to Discovery because they said they ran out of money the second half of the season. So we'll see if that holds up. Well, the first two episodes, it was like that. There's a lot of those long hallway yeah. walk scenes. And very, again, it did. Discovery really feels like one super long ass movie. A very yeah. long, boring movie. And you could take Orville episodes and you feel, oh, these are episodes. Not just, oh, you stopped watching a movie an hour and a half in. But the character development is so, oh, much, so much bigger in, 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 in Orville. It's not even close. So I finally got this name correct. It's Xena the Trace or Xena the Third. I was trying to read it as one big name. But um, yeah, thanks for correcting me on that. <laughs> but That's it was, funny. It's just one of those things that I suck at names. But um, the, the next comment. I, I do kind of wish that we, we would be able to spend more time building up uh, the Tyler is a Krill thing. Yeah, people were immediately figuring out the plot, but it still would have been a greater scene of Wade if we could have known Tyler over the course of the season. We care more about her because of her relationship with Ed, and then they captured, then captured by the Krill. She's getting tortured. We would feel like she's she could damn she could die, and then bam, the worst fears are realized when the Krill she was a Krill the whole time. Maybe have a scene later where she feels conflicted about her about the Krill's approach. But that might happen anyways. That's true because we only knew her for one episode. Yeah. And in that episode, she wasn't the focus. So we didn't get to know her at all, really. I, I agree with that. It could have been. Yeah, but the thing is, we don't know how much time has passed between episodes either. Like, yeah, but I know we, we didn't, didn't see it. I know. I yeah, know. We I know didn't experience saying. it. We didn't experience it. I guess it's my nitpick that I wish it would have been more of a. Uh, uh, of their relationship so the betrayal had more impact but with that out of the way i love this episode the b plot was funny it looks like malloy might get some character development coming down the tubes an enemy capable of whooping the floor the krill the union has to step up their game i do enjoy the krill pick the fight with these guys and now the krill are getting their butts kicked ed's a uh, little speech how the species usually act when they encounter other species was really neat and, and all and the effort he puts into the uh forward into the whole this will only end with one of us deciding to trust each other and try to end the conflict. The Krill was very admirable. Once again, this episode was well done and entertaining, and I can't wait for more. Yeah, I thought 
in like there's like other con outfits in this comic so i read it somewhere else but people saying oh uh his uh his acting mcfarland's acting is bad oh you gotta be kidding me. i don't know what they're talking about i think he it's does amazing. a good job he, does he a very was good made job. to play a, a sci-fi captain he yeah. just fits he does it so well yeah is, is he is he like you know one of the greatest actors of our time no but he does a good job he does a really amazing job and it's believable totally yeah everything he does you you believe he believes what he's saying and i think it's good because he's such also being a he also have a comedy so as he could put that little bit every now and then that really yeah. adds to the character I think. that that he uh mcfarland plays a really good straight guy yeah. And then he can also play the idiot fool, like especially when he yeah. uh, it comes with relationship stuff. He, oh, yeah. He's a complete moron. That's what makes it funny. You know, spying on his girlfriend, ex girlfriend, yeah. and stuff. But the thing is with her though that we kind of knew it was the same actress that was pointed out to yeah. us in the first episode. But it could, it would have been nice way longer. But again, I can kind of see why they did it too. Yeah, because out of the way. Yeah, it's in the movie. Yeah, but, so that way, maybe they can advance the the union, the crow relationship. Yeah. Closer that way, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like I, like I mentioned in the episode, I know it's not as big as Kittimer. But it could be that first little step towards, hey, look, we could have killed her. Everything she did to me, mm-hmm. we still decided it was important enough to, to, to exchange, yeah. let you have your citizen I'm hoping, I'm hoping she defects and goes in and she becomes a union officer. That, that's what I'm hoping. That would be cool. A cruel or, 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 or necessarily just becomes like the first, like um, like an emissary yeah, type Yeah, maybe character. exchange, yeah. maybe. Yeah, where like, oh, I'm going to come and learn human ways and then be like the first crossover. I think that would be well, pretty Well, that would be cool. funny to see Malloy <laughs> Yeah, and he gets to be on the uh, curl ship. He's like the exchange yeah, student. That'd be funny. That happened with Riker when yeah. they were on the clean on ship. That, that was, was a cool episode. Was they were cheating episode. like crap. I loved it. Yeah. Um, our next comment, uh, SJ Pace, 1776. Another 9 out of 10 episode for me. Loved it. One detail I found interesting is how they use hum- humor with Mercer and Malloy to give insight into Ed's mindset and Janelle's secret. Malloy asks, have you done it? Which is funny because Ed hasn't shown how emotional the relationship is for him. When Tanya reveals she, how she used skin-changing surgery to fool them, the one thing that would have given her away might have been if Ed had pushed to be intimate. It's a nice touch to get the, the plot point and characterization in a quick joke in the show how the Orville rides the lines between genres. And that's true because if they would have had like intercourse or somewhere, I'm pretty sure they, they didn't go that deep into... Switching your anatomy, you know, because who knows how I, they I, think, I think I think as far as it went, because since they're not a knowledge of them, or was limited until they got that ship and that book a little bit. I think it's the other way around, too. Yeah. They don't know a lot about human anatomy, they know the superficial, but they don't know. Yeah, they know they're yay high, yay, you know, yeah. like they have two eyes, two hands. But I think the most they did is maybe heavy penny, but I don't know. That's yeah, they're, 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 they made out yeah. Meh, more than that. Who knows? Uh, F C O L D, so F cool D. She could have been, she could have shot him to to not be a prisoner so it's fair that to let her go. I agree with the other poster that it may have been better getting gotten to know her more before this episode, but a good thing about the show it has been them not dragging stuff out, which is true. They don't have they haven't had that uh super long arc going over multiple episodes yet. They haven't done one of those. Well, it's always funny. They, and when Next Generation first started out, they didn't either right away. But yeah. then eventually in that second, third season, there was a longer You arc. can have like those bigger, yeah. longer epic yeah. storylines. And um, yes, I guess uh, she could have shot him, so you let her go. It's like, it wasn't a fair trade. Because he... She I think in some ways she does like him, but again, it's like I said, it's the Krill thing mantra in her head saying, oh no, he's the enemy, he has no soul, and all that crap keeps coming into her mind. That's my thing. Uh... Ben Suisse? Again, I apologize for messing up names. The new alien human aided and abetted the escape of a krill and killed their soldier in the process. No way the the new race like humans would be added to their uh aided their enemy. Exactly. Remember those new the new aliens? Yeah. They're gonna just assume the humans are just as bad as the krill. They might assume that if they even know anything about the union yet, they might not even know. But they're that. gonna be they're probably has again, if the crow were their first like alien interaction, they're gonna just assume all aliens are evil. It could be. Which is again, do you blame them? No, I'm because not they saying. were literally they literally just didn't even give them a oh, here they are, they're in the way, they're like uh, you know, when you're clearing a field and there was bugs and they just get rid of well, them. Well what they did is they probably took one of their outline colonies that wasn't defended as well. Yeah. See they didn't realize when their armada ships came, they were pretty big and powerful. They didn't realize that. Hmm? So uh, we have Daniel Ger. It's up on screen. I do apologize. Uh, these uh, these usernames. I'm just the worst. Uh, hello. I love the integration of music in the Orville. Another composed score 
for the show, I mean, the inclusion of the Billy Joe music was the best so far. Also, the episode made me think of the uh, Next Generation Season 3 episode called The Enemy, where Jordy gets stuck on a planet with the Romulan and the force to work with him to escape. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. We love doing these videos. We, all, we always... Again, this video could not exist without the commenters. So thank you for you guys for leaving all the comments. And yeah, that was a cool episode. That was cool because when it happened, it was two Romulans. And the second Romulan was on the Enterprise. And he could have been saved. The only one that gave him the donor was Worf. Worf didn't want to do it. He said, come on, Worf, you have to do it. And you don't want them to order him. And the other one said, I don't want it either. So he died. So That's crazy. Yeah. And Tom Locke was gave a justification to go over to Neutral Roll to attack the Enterprise. And they found oh, there's another Romulan on the surface. Oh, okay, now it's okay because they're going to get another Romulan out of it. So it's like, yeah, but... <laughs> That that goes to show you, like between the Klingons and Romulans, is that deep seated oh, hatred. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's 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 deep. Yeah. And he's like, you know, you'd rather die. Yeah, than you take <laughs> that's blood. crazy. That's crazy, right? But that goes to show you that's a classic sci-fi working with your enemy because if you're stranded on the planet, we're both gonna die, or we can work together. Yep. And maybe you can see that maybe we're not so different. Yeah, funny. And then the, the Romulan did work with Jordy yeah. on the planet, but it was different with the Klingons. Romulans, no, oh, no, yeah. just no way. They're, no, on the, on the human Romulan, it's bad, but Klingon Romulan, mm -mm -mm. no. But that was that was a cool episode. That um, was good. Uh, Billy Deerhead always gives us really, really good responses. So we're going to break it down. Uh, yeah, I love his avatar too. It's cool. But we're going to break it down from paragraph to paragraph. So starting off first paragraph. Once again, some great character and world building for the, for the Orville. Uh, and Mercer shows us all what a big softy he really is deep down. Anyone who recognized the actress name of the last year's Krill episode could easily predict the new cartographer would turn out to be a spy. Which is certainly explains why she revealed her true identity only after appearing in two episodes. I would have preferred to see the relationship begin and develop gradually over the course of several months before the Jack in the Box finally, finally sprang. But there are plenty of good reasons to explain the story moving along faster. Yeah, that's again, they're just they're moving the plot along and to get yeah. that, maybe that first step of Krill. That's what I said, maybe yeah. that might lead to something this season. Uh, seeing Malloy going after the commander spot was a refreshing bit of growth for the character, who was almost exclusively comic relief. Although his motives may not have been the best, it's certainly easy for anyone to understand the desire not to be pigeonholed hold into a single role in life. It's nice to finally see Malloy trying to improve himself as a person, and that look on his face at the end of the episode showed that he's really understanding the seriousness behind the command. Whether or not he continues to pursue that goal any further, only time will tell. And also really like the bit of reassurance Kelly gave him about what a good person he was. He may not be suited for command, but he's still the best time pilot in the Union. Which is good. I, I like that because, like you said, he's like he's always there for a quick whip and a joke and a yeah. quip. But to see him want to actually further his career, I think that's cool. I think at first, like you said, it was kind of maybe because he wanted the praise. And the ladies too, but I think mostly it was a praise. And then after that moment, he's like, and at the end, oh, this is real serious. People could you, die. You could die. You got to make tough decisions. It's not about, oh, look, praise me, I'm the captain. No, it's it's tough. Uh, getting back to Mercer, and I guess uh, we call her Tyla now. The evil alien with the personal grudge going through a painful transformation disguise themselves as a human in order to seduce their enemy to a deadly trap. Now, where have I heard that pop before? Pretty much exactly what happened in Discovery. Yeah. But I don't know, somehow it was better here <laughs> with the whole thing with oh, Tyler. Lorca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyler and then yeah. Lorca too, both. <laughs> See, but Tyler literally changed That's, his body. Yeah, he, yeah. Did, he did, he did. Normally, I'd consider it overly convenient for Mercer's captors to be attacked right before his own torture session begins. But given the extremely xenophobic nature of the Krill, and certainly that they are, they've earned a great deal of enemies out there, I'll let that particular convenient plot to a slide. I was uh, generally surprised that Mercer went out of his way to help Ty Tyla. Instead of trying to get help for uh, from the aliens attacking the Krill, considering the enemy of my enemy is my friend and all, I can't help... But doubt Mercer would have been as forgiving if the, the aliens he waited uh, waited until after he had been tortured for a few hours before attacking the Krill. But certainly Mercer was letting his heart do the decision making here, as he proved to be to do from time to time. Sometimes I can't decide if it is an endearing trait or if he is over, uh, overly naive. He he's a very um, emotional decision yes, maker, especially since the the whole I think the whole relationship thing. And he saw it as an opportunity. Oh, maybe I can use that to maybe get to her so that can maybe better relations. And I think he still cares about her. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think that's... That the, didn't even sit if you want him to come back to the movie now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like that, that's never going to happen. But yeah, like you said, he, he is a lot of heart. And I yeah. think that's, that even reflects McFarlane as a person, yeah. too. He's a... He's a, he's I, a I, think, I think he might have been willing to tackle those aliens, but when he saw them just shoot the other crew in the head... They're not playing around. Yeah, they're gonna just, just they're gonna just assume I'm on the ship. They don't even care if I'm a prisoner. Yeah, they're gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah they're not gonna care. 
Uh, watching their escape crash pod on the planet was one hell of a spectac uh, spectacle. I can't remember the last time I saw Star Trek actually show a shuttle crashing with that kind of in-your-face detail. Normally, you would just hear static on the bridge and then cut to the exterior shot of the shuttle after the crash. Then the rest of the episode became uh, enemy mine trope, which I personally don't mind, but I do imagine plenty of others will be eager to criticize. While Mercer continues to hang onto the woman he fell for, trying to find some trace of her and Tyla, I was amazed to see any genuine concern for Mercer coming out, given that he was responsible for killing her brother, even after all that time they have, they have spent together. I really... I have a really hard time seeing her getting past that. I'd much more inclined to believe that she's just pretending to still love him in order to get him to save her ass and possibly to try to lure him into another <laughs> trap later in the series. But the fact that the Krill are even capable of disguising themselves as human is is consequentially should be absolutely terrifying for the Union. Well, you know, I think that, that whole concept kind of reminds me in Deep Space Nine with the, the, change, the changelings. Yeah. How they could, when they cause all that Hubbub well, on but the it's Earth. funny, but who who described first? It was a union yeah. that went into the krill ship and did that. So yeah. it's like they did it too, so it could easily do it the other way around. Yeah, turn about, but the yeah. uh, union's much easier to infiltrate. Oh yeah, of course. So much easier to infiltrate yeah. because they'd be like, oh, you're just on a planet, and people are gonna just you know fake some documents and get in oh, there. Oh yeah, of course. I think she cares about him. I do too, but I, she, like I said, she just she has to have that conflicting view. Yeah, he did kill his brother. That was that was combat. It was like he just killed him in the middle of the night. But he also saved all those children. Yeah. If he was just this cold-blooded killer, why wouldn't you just kill them all? And she was still wondering that. I remember the first time they met, they go, yeah, why'd you see the children? Because they're just kids. They're not my enemy. Not yeah, they're not that. combatants. Yeah. Well, they'll just grow up and become soldiers and they want to kill you. Well, then that's their decision. Yeah. I can't... But I'm going to give them a chance to grow up. See, there you go. So I think she still see... I think she can see some of that. Because and then the fact that she was with him, got to see these movies, she got to, you know... And see that he has enjoyment. Yeah. How can you think someone who has no soul would do the save children, have... Things like music and art and all the things, and they're nothing. I mean, some of that had that to sink is, in. Yeah. And she and I, I don't, and we don't know the time, but I'm pretty sure she was on the ship for, for months, for a while, for a while. So she it had to sink in a little bit. Uh, going beyond the plot of the episode, I love the world building that was done here. Creating a personal enemy among an enemy alien race is always more interesting than the simple race of bad guys. It reminds me of all the times the next generation and then the Enterprise would encounter a Romulan ship. The real tension always came from the Romulan uh, commanders. Although Commander uh, Tomalak, played by Anderson, uh, Anderson's... Uh, was, great too. Yeah, yeah, was uh, clearly the most frequent and well-remembered. My favorites were those played by uh, Alan Scharf, the man who voiced the absolutely perfect for villain roles. I also like to add that I've been listening to She's Always a, she was Always a Woman on loop the entire time while I was writing this. Thank you, Sekhmer Frong, for introducing me to this song. I love it. It's a, it's a very... I think every man who's ever loved a woman ever has met a woman like this who's... No matter what she does... You're still kind of in love with her, even though she could have totally screwed you over. She's always a woman to me. She can stab me in the back, you know, throw it. That's her. Yeah, but hey, she's, she, you still have feelings. And yeah. I think after everything happened, Mercer still cares about her. This kind of goes back to that. I just thought of this when I was reading these comments. Um, remember the conversation that Mercer and Kelly had? He's like, well, if two people love each other, who cares? If they're commander and captain, it doesn't matter yeah, as long as you love each other. Of the season, yeah. He lived up to it. I love this alien woman. Yeah. Even though she's an enemy and tried to kill me, it doesn't matter. I love her because I think when you love someone, it transcends everything. Yep. I think he's, yeah, and he lived up to everything he said then. That's true. So I thought that was a kind of little kind of callback to that. <laughs> it's so funny when I look at it. Even in Star Trek, you don't see a lot of human-alien relationships when I think about it. Not many. A couple Vulcans and... Yeah, Vulcans yeah. and humans, that's about it. You don't see, like... I'm sure they are, but you just you, don't see you it. Just, that's not, it's not part of the... We don't hear yeah. really much of that. But here, like, everyone, yeah. <laughs> everyone's doing everybody. No, yeah. it's just... um, it's just, The Orville's different. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. Um, I honestly, to be honest with you, I didn't know that song either until I heard I it. I did. <laughs> you guys are all uncultured swine. I know uh, you don't know the good songs. Um, Ro Heta? Again, I apologize. Another great show, guys. Uh, is it believable that just a few short months of a former teacher at an elementary level, Tyler, got over her likely PTSD enough to learn everything about how to become a dark matter cartographer, not to mention the human and a member of the union, uh, uh, after having not even seen a sci scientist and become a good enough to pass for one on a starship? Apparently, Tyler's been emitting a beacon to the Krill ships. Um, probably. 
She's well, probably been doing stuff like that. And but, but again, you have to remember, I bet you Krill, probably their events and other things, maybe that Union aren't, so that's why it was probably Maybe they do learn fast. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe it was easy for them. Then, I mean, she didn't know some of the, in these scenes, but it was easier. Like I said, it's easier to be a human than it is for a human to be a Krill. Yeah, and then it gets like her learning all the things about being a dark matter cartographer. Yeah. Just, what if they do learn fast? What if yeah, they do exactly. Have, we saw now. Yeah. They didn't go into detail, but yeah, if you think about it, like, whoa, how did this happen? Eh, sci-fi nonsense. We will, we'll just go yeah, with we'll it. Yeah, we'll go with it. Uh, Taxi Driver and one version of the King and I films has something in common. Jodie Foster starred in both. Could this be a hint that the two will appear in a future episode? That'd be cool. That is kind of cool. But McFarlane has that ability to get these stars to come in and be in episodes yeah. and stuff. And I love the fact he uses so many Star Trek people. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, and just sci-fi alumni. Well, no, no, together. Yeah, it's awesome. Why is a tactile display two dimensions? Ships would also travel up and down, but the display only had uh, no way of showing that. Really should have been a holographic display. Yeah, it should have been like a pop-up in 3D because technically they could have been coming from underneath. Or Yeah. But eh, I think it was a quick little thing that they didn't probably I'm, I'm think not about gonna, it. I'm, that, that, that's something I don't, I'm not going to give them a There's a really Here's a really funny little short story. There's a game called uh, Homeworld, and it's a RTS space uh, game. So I had my I had my mothership, and I put a bunch of uh, defense turrets around it. But I'm an idiot. Space is 3D, so the enemy just flew up and down. So the, all my defenses were useless because he, he came from the top. But I was thinking 2D space, not 3D space. So that, that was just a funny thing that made yeah. me remind me of that. Because I was thinking 2D only, That's not 3D. Funny. So I, I wasted all my time. It was like two hours. I got myself killed. Um, uh, same, same commenter. They go on. When the Krill appeal... Uh, Appeared to be torching Tyla. Why wouldn't Ed demand to see her in the same room? Because of the virtual reality was uh, uh, obviously possible. Apparently, Tyler went through a quite an extensive surgical process to look human. How come her appearance had been reverted to Krill so quickly? So Tyla is a mere school teacher, man managed not only to escape a union ship, but also get all the way back to the Krill planet. Kind of strange credibility. Great to see other spacefaring race, uh, the the Chakra? Yeah. Yeah, there's something like that. Again, unless we see them more, it's going to be hard for me to remember these uh, brand new alien names. Now it becomes more interesting just uh, just against the bad, than just us against the bad guys. Many more story possibilities come into play. That sort of reminds me of Star Wars. The way they take off in escape pods, land on a planet, and look like Dagobah, Yoda Swamp Planet. Yeah, kind of, but it was a little more... Uh, uh, foresty. Yeah, I would say I, I it almost like it almost felt like yeah, like you said, almost like a jungleish. I yeah. would say more than I'd say swampish. Jungle, swampish. But um, like like you did bring up, she escaped Union. And I said that before, wow. and I said it's kind of weird. Was that planted for her to escape? See, I don't know. But why would the Union do that? Maybe they implanted something in her. I don't well, know. She's a double, triple agent. That would be um, funny. It's super weird because, yeah, she was just a school teacher, so yeah. she wouldn't have, like, tactical espionage know-how. No. Unless, maybe, the, I, I'm assuming the Krill probably have all their citizens yeah. go through some type of military but it's training. Funny, it's funny. He was mentioning that maybe when they are torching, that might have been a hologram thing. Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't know if they have, like, holodecks on their ships. I doubt it. They seem too much like a warrior race for that. They'd have something like that. Yeah. So I'm wondering, when she was tortured, that was really happening to her. She was just taking it. Or that could have been pre-recorded. Could have been. Then that was recorded months and months and months ago. Could have been. I mean, also, her outfit did look a little different, too, in that thing. I'd, I'd have to go she back. Was wearing, she was wearing, like, these silver boots. It was kind of weird, like a dress. It was kind of... Because they were supposed to be going on vacation and everything. I guess. So I don't, but another funny thing he did mention is she came. She went to look like a krill again, and it was a pretty quick process. Like, how long were they on that Krill ship? What, an hour? Two I would say hours? a couple hours. Maybe it's easier to undo than it is to... See, it was, but we didn't get previewed to... Well, but, but the, well, I could say it this way. It might have been a lot longer to make her human because they don't know the human anatomy totally, but they know Krill anatomy. So maybe it's easier to yeah. do it back. I don't know. I'm just trying to give an explanation. It's kind of, yeah. I'm um, going continue on. It also reminded me of uh, Star Trek Enterprise because they run through the woods in the dark. Those kinds of scenes really old style bringing uh pretty boring because you can't see much and it doesn't matter anyways it didn't surprise me to find out that they were um this was written by uh, uh bagara he usually leaves this kind of scene in the past tyler doesn't trust ed the proof is that when he tells her about the length of the day on the planet they're on she doesn't question it it uh doesn't ask to see the readings she just accept it accepts it um that's another thing too because why wouldn't you be like oh prove it to me but I he think just could have left it and he could have just left her that yeah exactly that's why I think she believed him that, that's how I was thinking and she's pretty, it's a pretty desperate situation Yeah, she's probably not thinking 100% clearly either so she's going to trust him 
Yeah, and she did give him his jacket to cover. He didn't like say, "Oh, forget you, just stay in the cave." He didn't say that. Yeah, because he could have easily just took off. Yeah, because those are going to chase after him. Yeah, he'd have been gone. So already. it's like that. Uh, she, the trust in this was there. He trusted her. She trusted him. And if he did that, she would have died. Those other, those other railing races would have killed her. Uh, it seems odd the crow have no standard way of dealing with sunlight and that such devices are not stored in escape pods. In their line of work, they must need to be uh, on sunlit panels constantly. Surely they have invented some types of devices to help them cope with this. Remember they had full-on helmets? Yeah. In that first episode, before we even knew they, they were the crow? So cool. When they stole cool. that uh, plant thing that can make plants yeah, grow they, fast? Yeah, they, they, no, they can for time on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And they were wearing full body armors. So they do have something... And maybe in the escape pods, maybe they're just super like, oh, if you had to run away from battle and you're not saved from a planet of sunlight, you deserve to die. Yeah, that's maybe, what I think. Maybe they're they had just had this very uh, crappy way yeah, of... They say it's the will of Avis. Yeah. I know how they, that's how they think. If Avis wanted you to live, you'd find a way to survive. Yeah. So it might be some that, that well, kind of craziness. It's weird. And it, it's funny, too, because uh, all enough, I was reading uh, on McFarland's Twitter and this guy was saying, oh, how come the krill burn up? He goes... Well, their their plan is basically like uh, like the Krill uh, UK. That's what it is. There's no so sunlight. That's why. Um, I I didn't really get the joke when Gordon is doing the Rorschach test. It just seemed uh just too nervous to answer. How cool was it when Gordon tried to use the version of the Corbinite maneuver in from uh the original series, the original track. Um, the Corbin motion maneuver. Yeah, that'd been funny. But uh, here's the funny thing. Um, I think it was nervousness. And his own perverted mind seeing things because he's just... He was, At first he wasn't doing bad and then he just kind of didn't know what to say. Yeah, then, but when he was doing the, the ink block test. Oh, remember? yeah, the ink block test. Yeah, when they were basically saying, okay, what do you see? Oh, that's disgusting. And, oh, it's, it's, it's even nastier. Because that's his mind, that's why. I yeah, think it was a combination of nerviness yeah. and his own perverted mind that he is that kind All right, of next guy. one. Okay, we'll come back to this. This is all too much for you. <laughs> Such an um, idiot. And uh, to finish off this uh, comment, uh, good stories come from in threes, and I'm betting there will be a third chapter to Ed and Tyler saga. Yeah, it's going to come up again. I guarantee it. If not this season, definitely next season. Uh, season finale. That'd I love that cool. kind of stuff. Overall, a fun and thought-provoking episode. The idea that change can begin with just one person in a very nice in a, is a very nice one. Could have even applied to current government shutdown, though. I wonder if it is wise for it to do. The teacher is not as important person to Krill society. Probably won't have the ability to effectively advocate change in Krill society, which is true. But if she is a teacher and she teaches the children, you know, maybe it does something. Maybe it does nothing. But oh. you got to hope. And this thing—it's a frailty of the human. Yeah, well, condition. yeah, exactly. That's what we've always wanted. We're always optimistic and always try to try to do the right thing. You know, especially in their time after four hundred years, they're going to be more evolved on that but it's so funny when you talk about it won't affect change well i'll use an analogy that i heard in a movie one time uh it's power one excellent movie where the guy goes yeah you know well a water falling starts with one drop and look what that happens see all it mm. takes is one that's all you can do as long as you change that mind maybe they'll change a mind and yeah. then you could that's what it takes may might well, take a while and if, if if he only changed her mind and no one else's that's still good. That's a victory. Yeah. No, it kind of reminds, yeah, again, the, the little parables, the little stories. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy, he sees a, a dude walking on the beach, and he's throwing starfish back into the ocean. It's like, why, why are you doing that? There's thousands of starfish that get stranded on the ocean. It's not going to matter. It's like, well, it mattered to that one. The, yeah. one, the, the one that I say that mattered to him yeah. or to it or whatever. But, yeah. yeah, so maybe if the only mind he changed was hers, that's a victory. Yeah, exactly. So I even, I may not be like that tactical, oh, I'm going to change the whole society. But if you help one person, I think that's good enough. That's good enough for me. Yeah. Um, nah, on our next comic, uh, Power OFK. Enjoyed the episode. Honestly, I like the Orville better than any of the uh, Star Treks. Yes, even better than Next Generation. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I'm not gonna, I'm I not ain't going to go. Now I ain't going to go there. Deep Space Nine is Next Generation. Not yet. But, it's got a while to go. But the, the uh, here's the thing. I really... Uh, they really stretch out Malloy's wanting to be the commander for the most of the series. Not consistently, but once in a while, having him eventually get past the early parts of the training only to fail out the next step until he finally gets it and then possibly in the final season, whatever it is, he'll show huge growth in his uh, him as a character. Possibly eventually making him in command not of a ship, but of a flight school as uh, a pilot. Uh, it's an ace pilot. It would be nice. It'd be nicer that he had drawn out an Ed and Jyla thing, but a bit longer so that the betrayal would seem much more powerful for Ed. 
or painful for Ed, but then you go into the season not knowing it would have uh, been renewed again. It's possible the, accel the accelerators on things. Plus, it could also be at least put a halt to the hostilities between the Union and Krill for a time. Doubtful that they'll ever be true allies, but maybe be forced into an enemy of my enemy situation a la World War II or the Dominion War. Yeah, uh, exactly. Whenever they end up having to trust each other for a time being due to a large mutual threat, though not... Uh, ever fully trusting each other or they could end up like in a cold war style uh, standoff or eventually both who knows there are so many ways that this could go um i do like the idea of that of malloy slowly but surely making oh, his way through cool. the, and that would be so cool to see him in like the head of something yeah you know maybe not necessarily a captain but maybe the the, the top uh flight instructor like yeah. in the orb of the whatever their academy is that'd be cool and like you said um I would say I would imagine something like a Dominion type war where hey Vulcans if, it's, if you don't join us you know with the Romulans they're gonna come and crush you too because yeah. once they crush us and they get the clean out of the way you stand no chance. Yeah, but since he mentioned he mentioned exploration, I'm all thinking he's fine. I don't think he could do what Cisco did to get the or get the grill to the war. I don't know about that, but man, that's some dark stuff. I love. I loved it. it. Oh I gosh, loved, I love the, the, those final seasons of DS9 were so intense. It's ridiculous. Damn line, I'm thinking about it again. It was so good. <laughs> I gotta think about that. It's just incredible. Uh, Slicer neons. Uh, they went all out this time. Everything about it was a great was great sci-fi. Uh, they. Um, when they said Lieutenant Tyler, I knew they were trolling uh, STD. Wonderful. Good dialogues between Ed and Tyler and Gordon's character growth. Guy, can I catch a break uh, with the women in, the, in this show? I empathize. Krill and uh, the Chaktal are ugly uh, in an ugly contest. No one wins. I love the way they look. They may not be um, like beautiful looking, but I think they look cool. They're cool looking. They're cool looking. They, I kind of want to see their little battles. Like, I mean, it's like when you first see like the Jemadar, like they're cool looking. Yeah. I just like the way they look. They have a, I, I've always liked reptilian creatures. They look every, cool. every, every, ever since the Gorn, I've always liked, I've read like dinosaur like people. Yeah, every time when he plays like, you know, Morrowind or plays games, he always has to be the lizard race. Yeah, I'm always in our Gorn. I just love <laughs> lizard people. They're just cool. Uh, Jonathan, uh, Marcindo. I really liked the episode. I actually loved it. While cliche, it's certainly executed very well. It's classic sci-fi with the modern twist in terms of the way that the themes and the stories are presented. I like the one uh, story of the pilot training for command. Everyone knows uh, that he's a simple guy, but while he the, the first nuance instincts of a commander are simplistic in terms of respect, worth, experience, and social status, I believe he realizes he wants more out of life. He is a great pilot, but maybe that's not enough for him anymore. I hope they go into this in later episodes. He may not be a genius, but to him, he could be a real uh, could be real character growth, similar to Alara, the security officer, I believe, in the episode concerning her facing her fears. Yeah, that was a good episode. Oh, that was a great episode. Oh, was this? I forgot what the name of that episode was. Something with fire. Um, Firestorm. Yeah, that's what it was called. Uh, but uh, have a a face that he wants. Uh, once out of his life an overall great episode the show is humorous insightful thrilling emotional and more importantly fun does everyone remember when things were fun and not the a representation of an absolute autonomy of moral and ethical paragons of human virtue social justice warriors doctors who in star trek are both science uh science-centric shows highly benefiting from the mindset okay i'm done i'm <laughs> sorry not sorry yeah i know and everything has to be this giant uh parable for political how things are going right now and one-sided views of history it's just a fun show yeah it's a the and orville it is that point of things but again it makes you think about it yeah it doesn't force you down your throat and tells you there's only one way to think yeah this one again another episode that pointed out there was multiple paths would it have made more sense for for uh ed just to leave in the middle of the day and just leave her there because yeah. he didn't make combatant was it smart for him to let her go is that there's a lot of different... And believe me, Kelly wasn't happy about it at no, all. She, she, was she was giving him the business. Yeah. But yeah, I love the... Um, there are imperatives, but they're not so hammered over your freaking head to make you feel like if you disagree with a certain character, Michael Burnham, if you just say you disagree with her, yeah. you're a bad person. Oh, yeah. They don't make you think that with anything. Oh, no, 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 no. Not in the same episode. That. And you, wouldn't, you don't get it from any Orville fans either. Yeah. No. Uh, Brian McGinnis? I enjoyed your review. It does make me uh, does make sense for Ed to be the the one to shoot, since the military officer would have had uh, thorough weapons training. Where Tyler was just a school teacher and wouldn't be likely have been well trained. I agree. Ed's decision to release Tyler to her people, even if she doesn't 
promote peace, this action demonstrates to the Krill that the Union is willing to be friendly, which could pave the way for negotiations at some point in the future. Moreover, little would have been accomplished by keeping her captive. School teacher wouldn't be the best person to interrogate about military secrets, for example. Yeah, she she can only give them what she knew, which would be very well. Low. I think what they probably want to know is how does she make herself look like a human and how it can detect that. I think they'd want to know that. But yeah, that I would think, be. I think that's the only thing that she'd have value. And yeah, those are the, like that the part because I think just like um, I always bring this up whenever Captain Mercy gets into a fight, he's kind of a badass. I think that's a little bit of McFarland, like you know, like oh look, I'm the tough guy a little bit. Eh, whatever. Yes. I told you, when we're following police got the murder, sometimes he's back in his garage doing those Star Trek videos he did when he was in high school. And yeah, he was the he's, the Kirk. Kirk. He's, he's the Kirk. He's the Kirk. He is. Which is fine. He, that's what he wants to be. <laughs> little cowboy, you know. And he's all shooting and they're missing and he's hitting every target. Yeah. That's just how it is. You see, he's, he's, he's dead. I mean, I need to see him with his legs as a pose with a gun like this, you know, where his gun's pointing yeah. forward. Haha, I got you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it does. And again, hopefully it does lead to something. I think hopefully, it will. hopefully she goes back to her people and they'll be like, what, are, what do they do to you? What demands do they have? And she'd be like, nothing. They just let me go. Okay. And then maybe they can see, maybe these quote unquote soulless creatures aren't so soulless after all. As you show them the fair movie, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, because the Nazis were the good guys. Check out these really cool guys. They're called Nazis. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, Will Adams, I don't think that this was the best episode this season. Patrick uh, Walter Burton, uh, Seinfeld's putty, Venture Brothers, Brock Sampson, he's the voice of the, the one. Yeah, that, yeah. The, yeah that elf. As the new security yeah. officer is annoying. This remains last week, mainly due to the carefully crafted tone shift. Um, some Yeah, people really love that whole turn around in the last episode when it oh. went from dinner party to hostage situation no what he said well, like i said i thought he was a neat freak oh grab the hand no he's kidding oh my goodness he's not kidding oh that my was a, that was a great plot twist but i still think this episode was stronger overall oh yeah um the relationship between the top brass on the ship is starting to annoy me the the krill are good and the bad ear aliens are super cool I would hope that they become regular features in the series. The special effects are super good and reminds me of those on Babylon 5. Um, yeah, that's just, again, uh, from episode to episode, I always will point out how great things look. Oh, yeah. I love the design of the ships. I love the designs of the aliens. The makeup jobs are just phenomenal. And then they look all believable. It looks like, oh, this could be a futuristic sci-fi world. <sighs> I can see where you were, like, where Mercer's kind of like, he does a lot of things by, you know, fly by wire. He does it. He shoots. From but again, head. but again, that's the Captain Kirk, like we just said before. It has that and, kind of feel. And it's a smaller ship. And yeah, they say medium cruiser. Yeah, yeah so it's one this isn't like the Enterprise no. of the of the Union. This is more like I don't know. That's what makes sense. And this is the Battle Cruiser. Yeah, it's not like see the Enterprise is the flagship of Starfleet. That's one of their top ships. This isn't it. Uh, Sue 10. The story was pretty obvious, but it was still good. Could have gone for some Cuban Krill sexy time, though. Maybe in some future episodes. <laughs> the funny thing is, the show really pushes, like, how much they show. Especially when that, the episode of Bored is Oh, like, my goodness. I was like, oh, <laughs> my. What is this? I'm like, oh, my God. Are we going to see something Well, it's here? so funny because our other brother watches Orville, and I told him he hasn't seen it. Okay, you're, it's a good message, but just be warning. It's going to be a little bit more, you know. Yeah, and make sure your no, daughters no, are in the no, room. Yeah, they don't exactly. need to see this episode. No, they don't. That's what I was trying to tell. But yeah, uh, Krill Human Sexy Time, I don't know. Will, will Mercer be uh, the first? <laughs> well, uh, Bo- I mean, if Boris wanted that one other alien that looked really cool, that everyone says, I can give you chubby, desperate Krill housewives. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, might, he might take them up on his offer. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, just Sheldon, uh, what weird foods do you guys eat while watching movies or TV shows? I normally just have a drink. I don't necessarily eat popcorn like normal. I don't know. No, I don't eat popcorn when you watch over, but mostly nothing. I just have, you, if I if I have a soda, a Mountain yeah. Dew. <laughs> Usually, my, my, my eating mostly goes when I go to the theater. Watch yeah, yeah. Do well, that. at home, I'm, Unless I'm watching a sporting event, but well, that's not The this, funny so. thing is, that's a funny question because um, with Pacific, particularly the Orville, it comes on so late, we already ate. So there's yeah. nothing. If it was a middle of the afternoon, maybe it'd be different. <laughs> that's a funny question, but there's your answer. I hope that's good enough. Uh, best episode of season, it was... Much better than STD Star Trek Discovery with the small details that really work in this episode. Seth did a Q&A on Wednesday night on Twitter. They say that they're optimistic about season three and he'll be writing a book about the universe. Hey, that's cool. Uh, I'll get that book because I want to read it. World building is cool. Um, sometimes it can get a, it can be a little bit of a drag, but if they put it into a book so you can go get it there so you don't have to necessarily waste a lot of time on the show to do it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's not necessarily wasted space of like learning about some okay, random... You could tell McFarlane wants to make his own universe where obviously Star Wars and Star Trek are so vast, but he wants to get his little niche in there where, okay, maybe this will be a good enough universe to build on and make it something more. 
You know, where you know all these different alien races and these different things, and it'd be cool on ships and yeah, phenomenons and just like um the, the just uh, we don't, we still don't know the history of how did the union come together. No, was it a first contact situation? Was like it what a, happened with Star yeah, Trek? Yeah. Did, yeah, did someone come up with uh, their quantum drive? Was that the the starting off point? So like, we know all know. that in Star Trek. Yeah, we, we don't know that in Orville. That'd be cool. Uh, our next uh, comment, uh, KJH. Good, uh, good episode. Surprised that Lieutenant Tyler reveal happened so soon. Uh, would have expected more time to go by. Nick Wink and STD mimicking the whole Volk Lieutenant Ash Tyler with Tyler and Lieutenant uh, Janelle Tyler. Then remind uh, remains showing up in the scimitar, just uh, manhandling the krill. Interesting. Uh, to know that the more more about that species, it was interesting to see the prisoner exchange went so smoothly. The cr- the curls show up, take her, leave peacefully. Let's keep that little nugget in mind. And that's the thing. Maybe you know those soldiers also saw that. Yeah, they could have set us up for a trap, and they didn't. Yeah. And it's just crazy that yeah. maybe they got to start rethinking yeah. their ways. Well, it's funny too. Like you said, it was such a big moment. Like you said, we said last time even Doctor Finn was on the bridge, and she's never on the bridge. And she wanted to see it because, oh, wow, it's a cruel ship not attacking us. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's right there and the weapons aren't charged, yeah. you know. Um, there's, a, there's a comment, uh, a response comment to this one from uh, Slithering Peanut. The entire episode was Robert Duncan McNeil's dig at Discovery for not letting him work on Discovery. That's all. <laughs> so did he work on? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah but I, I don't know if he necessarily that. worked on this exact episode. But you know what? There is some. I, I couldn't imagine that there wouldn't be a little bit of, uh, at least a little bit of hurt feelings. But because they wanted it, they wanted to do their version of it. Yeah, we don't want any old people on the yeah. show. That's why they didn't want uh, uh, the old ways of thinking. Yeah, but that but see, but that's paying homage to the old. But they don't they don't want to do that. Uh, our next comment, uh, Kevin Jones. Once again, another fantastic episode. And while I wish the the undercover spy was longer, it could it's still good. Also, I didn't realize Seth that was an atheist, but now after watching this episode about religion, it makes sense. Here's the thing, but he also doesn't um, bash it in the show. He may tell you about the extremisms, but he doesn't actually... He taught, but again, if you look at the episodes so far this season as a whole, you have an episode about faith, you have a little family, mil- pro-military, pro-family. Uh, and then uh, last year, I think probably, arguably, you could say is the best episode of the series. Uh, um, what was Majority Rule. Majority Rule. That was a very non-religious, but all secular. Uh, everything was entertainment, and that was basically their religion, and show how bad that was. Yeah. So he's showing both sides of... Oh yeah, the one the society where uh, Malloy, where, where, where Lamar was trapped in, yeah, yeah, basically. So like, yeah, they didn't seem to have uh, much of a religion, but it was all everything was judged on what media presence. Yeah, and 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 and, 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 by, and by superficial, you got to be constantly monitored in what you're doing. Yeah, there are some people in our society who would love to do that. But I, so I, I just think that yeah, he may he doesn't let his politics get too into the show, but when it does, he usually does a good job of showing both sides. Yeah. Which is cool. I like that about Seth MacFarlane. And, 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 and it's a wide net, so yeah. everyone will want to watch the show. Everyone can relate to it. Yeah. You can, you can even just be... Uh, when being like the the whole thing about addiction too, it, it's it can be uh, an allegory for anything. Yeah, which I think is a, what sci-fi should do. Exactly. Uh, our next comment got that way zero nine. Honestly, this was just okay, predictable episode. The Orville is is really overrated. I think fans just prop it up because ST Discovery isn't that great great of a series. So since Orville looks and feels like a '90s sci-fi show and has the old school vibe, people automatically just keep saying it's light years better than Discovery. Then honestly, to me, it just feels better. It just feels a little bit better than Discovery. Um, it, it it's way better than Discovery. I, I don't know if people you may get that feeling, but these two things aren't. Separate. It no. can be have an old school '90s feel and still be great. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you're you're just saying. No, what you're saying is what some people say about a uh, legion. It's all style, no substance. But there's substance. There, there. yeah, there's, there's substance. There's there. some good, thoughtful, thought provoking things yeah. that make you think about. Wow, how would I handle yeah. the situation? Then that's what all sci, all good sci-fi yeah, and does. And like that. we said earlier, with like the other commenter, it ain't on next generation's level. It ain't on these. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're it's 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 training up past Enterprise. Not quite Voyager yet, but it's getting there. It's See, around there. Yeah, it's around there. But if it keeps going the way it's going, three, four years, it's, then we got an argument. We're talking. We're talking top three or four. But yeah. right now, it's 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 in the middle yeah. of the pack. But uh, yeah, but at the same time, you're saying it's just a little bit better in Discovery. No, it's light years better in Discovery. It's not even close. Um. Not one thing that has ever happened to Discovery made me think, wow, that's a very thought provoking I can see both sides of this argument. I can see how this can be right and that can be right. Man, that's a tough decision. There's cool moments. Like when Sue was talking to Lorca and when they were in the Empire, that was excellent. 
Is that exactly like a Starfleet? But that was guy. a good character moment, not necessarily no, a sci-fi I'm not, moment. No, I'm not just saying yeah. there's good moments, but not a good overall message. No. Yeah, see, there's there's good again. Not saying it's not uh, the after school special. You have to learn something. No. But sci-fi should teach us a little something now and then. It doesn't have to be all the time. But I'm glad that it happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, our uh, uh, Rodin claws. It's uh, it's impressive that they managed to do SCD's entire Ash. Tyler's subplot in what an episode and a half and they didn't have to kill off Clyden or any other character really that's a joke about how they killed off the gay uh, uh, Paul's yeah, yeah. lover they killed him off and a lot of people got pissed off about that but it's just like they like made this big hubbub about this gay couple then they ended up killing him it's like why the hell did you do it then that was a funny little dig that any digs funny. on Discovery are welcome here yeah exactly because <laughs> they deserve it I, I actually don't mind Ed having more skill with the blaster than some lim- limited hand to hand stuff since the background didn't have him on the fast track before Derulio's blue balls <laughs> entered the picture also I have to say that I'm really dreading when they brought up Raiders and the Nazis but they pretty much just dropped it right after uh, just dropped it right away and didn't go on a tie ride. Nice to see Seth to keep that in his uh, pants, at least. I know because it's so fashionable to call everybody a Nazi, you know. But let's say it made sense. It was a movie raised on it. It made and sense. And they said it, did it, and it was gone. Yeah. Because fine. everyone knows, because those were real Nazis portrayed in that movie, yeah. so you can hate real Nazis. Yeah. Not someone who disagreed with me on the internet isn't a Nazi. You're a for idiot. For me, for the context, I think it's more a commentary about the krill and how yeah. they think than anything else. <laughs> you thought those were the yeah, good guys. It's, it's because Seth, like we said, he's a huge liberal, le- oh, leftist yeah. liberal. But he kind of keeps it out of his show for the most part, which is pretty cool. Cause it's all about the sto- show first. That's so, yeah, I like if you want to see Seth MacFarlane with the leash off, just watch Family Guy. Yeah. He goes after conservatives and... American Dad's probably, still not too bad. But man, Family Guy's crazy. And it's good. I'm glad he doesn't do that here no. at the Orville because it would really ruin it. Oh, yeah, it would. The, bleep pop, the B plot was okay. Malloy's uh, motivation besides the girls was fairly reasonable, especially given the reputation and currency dealing uh, that they revealed with Lamar in, the, in a better episode. Yeah, I remember how Lamar moved up. Yeah. And he, he's like the head of engineering now instead of just... So I guess maybe he kind of fills that too. Like, oh, he, he advanced. So maybe I need to advance. Well, he's super smart. Though. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's insanely smart. I do think it's funny that Gordon and Kelly shared so much screen time when the two actors are now engaged. But something tells me that might have been intentional. Again, the way they left it off was good as well. Leaving the ambiguous said he would choose it to do in the future. Yeah, they, they got engaged. I love that when he had that look in his face. He's like, oh, I don't know. He's just that's like, oh, this is big. He's thinking about it. He's like, do I steal my resolve and push through and want to be that or do i'm scared and i really don't want to do this now but we don't know that's cool the thing you have to understand all his free time is going to be gone too if he does that but that comes with the uh responsibility he continues on i think the best part of the orville episode like this isn't even the content but the potential that it opens up the best reactions i got not out of going over what I just saw, but what it means going forward. I don't think we will be getting a peace treaty between the Union and the Krill this season, but at least now we can see how it could be done. Another solid episode, and I'll be happy to rewatch again. See, that's another funny thing. Um, I will rewatch episodes of oh, Marvel. Oh, yeah. uh, Discovery, I will never re-watch, no. rewatch those episodes ever again, ever in my life. That's sad, because I've rewatched every ev- series and every episode at least more than once. Yeah. At least more than once. And things like uh, D-Space Nine. Oh, and, I bought and the yeah, yeah. But um, like you said, I, the, the potential for this world to grow can, oh, yeah. can start in this episode. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's cool, because... I know uh, episodes are episodic and they're contained universes in each episode, but there's little seeds that are planted that could open up to something bigger and something grander, yeah. and it could start with that the krill relations. In and this we already episode. started to open up because you already saw uh, Tyler's already from first season to this season, so you're already seeing that yeah. continu- continuity coming in. Um, uh, John Marks, I think you'll have a problem explaining to a certain admiral. Remember how he was in? De- yeah. He was kind of stepped in it before, and he kind of did it again. But maybe they can see the value in this. We um, all explain it. He's not going to just say, well, I let her go. And that's the end Yeah, of and just like what the other commenter said, saying she was just a school teacher. She doesn't have any information anyways. Yeah. So hopefully he doesn't get in too much trouble. But man, he's been he's been sticking in the eye of the upper brass a couple of times doing what he wants to do. But he's done a lot of good things but too. But he's also, so the, yeah. kind of balances out. Uh, cartoon fan 959. <coughs> uh, teaser for the new episode already shows Tyla in a red uniform. Uh, this could make another jab at STD. The episode, the lights are too dim inside the Orville, and Ed says something in the character to make fun of why the heck is it so dark. I know, when you watch Discovery, it's almost like the it's just everything's so dark. Hey, and- the thing is, 
And when they do take digs at Discovery, it's almost like saying, you guys can do better. Almost. Yeah. It's not necessarily saying, haha, we're better. No, it's like, you can do better, you know? It, it's funny, like, brought up in that, uh, one of the earlier comments, how they go for that dark cinematic look. Yeah. And this goes for a normal bright look. Yeah. It's funny, watch, like, three episodes of Discovery, and if you don't kill yourself, then watch an episode of Next Generation, like, you're going to have to wear sunglasses because you're going to think it's so damn bright. Yeah. The bridge on, on the Enterprise... The next generation, it's it's, it's uh, classic. Yeah. The bridge on the discovery just makes you feel like you're in some type of cold, dark silo. It's just un. Uh, and then another thing too is even some of the effects, like when they were when they captured that that big stone, whatever they had all yeah. that stuff they couldn't transport that material. That special effect to get that machine to do looked so janky. It looked awful. The, the, the 3D rendering on that was was pretty bad. Not for one millisecond did I think that thing was really no, there. It not, had no weight to no, it. No, it didn't. Um, I am bubbles. F- fly so high <laughs> i think i'm saying that wrong but it, it's funnier when i say it that way okay episode for me nothing groundbreaking but it's also nothing terrible like move along home in ds9 what the f was that seriously i really hope they will give gordon a chance to prove he's not just some goofy guy and would uh would be nobody if he couldn't drive a ship better than most and even if that's not true because he would be piling a garbage ship without ed waiting for him on the orville which is true he did pick him out He's like, yeah. I, I'm. They're gonna give me a ship, and I want you to be my. Yeah, because basically he was grounded because of all the stuff he was doing. All the stupid stunts stuff. and being drunk and everything. and everything. Oh, but funny the episode she's talking about is these race of people from the uh, Gamma Quadrant came, and they were one of the second race to come to the Alpha Quadrant, and they were being, and they just wanted to play games with Quark. And what they did is they played this one called Move of Long Home, but it makes the the captain and like uh, Bashir, Kira, and Jazia go into the game. So it's kind of like a D and D game, and they have to play to advance basically. See, it's a little silly, but, not, but at the end, nothing happened. They all died, but they just get out of it. But he didn't know that at the time. Cork didn't know they thought they were going to die. It's a silly episode, but... See, that's, um... But that was a season two episode. That was an early <laughs> season two episode. But that's just going to show you that, man. Some, they, they all can't be gold, no, everyone. No, no. You can't knock it out of the park every I like time. When they had to, they had to do the, they pass the one, the puzzle, they had to do hot skipping, and they had to say the saying. It's so stupid. It was them just trying to have a little fun. Yeah. It, did, it, it, was, a, it was definitely... More of a miss than a hit, but yeah. I thought it was just okay. It's not not super memorable. Would have been like, well, why didn't you tell me that they really weren't getting it hurt? Because Quirks out and kept on double or nothing. Yeah, every time. Money. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Baron of Hell. What, what a wonderful name. Uh, funny how people see things. I thought this was the worst episode so far. Loved the first two episodes. Hated how they treated the goblin race as a standard evil aliens. The scary, so they must be evil. Even you guys stated that. I didn't. Did I say that? Um, I guess they mm. do did it for people like you and the general public that judges races on the way they look. I didn't mind that as an in, they didn't mean that as an insult. It just seems lazy and boring. I mean, the crew attacked them. It's not supposed to attack them back. The captain never even tried to negotiate with them or join them. Taking into account that all the bad things they know coming from the race that murdered their people. I don't. I don't know. I don't think I said, oh, man, they're ugly, so they must be evil. No, and I never said that. One, and two, they were killing the crew that already wounded, so why would Mercer want to negotiate with Hey, guys! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If he would have poked his head out, he would be dead. I actually say that. I think they look cool. They're cool-looking, gorilla-looking people. Yeah, they're kind of like uh, goblin-looking people. Yeah, I mean, goblin, yeah, Yeah. gorilla chef. But here's the thing. I never said that just because they're ugly, they're evil. I don't know. I don't know if that... if, If you took it that way... I do apologize. No, I remember we said they were evil because what they were doing, not necessarily. Oh yeah, they're evil because they were killing downed people that yeah. were just injured and exactly and, and blew up the ship into pieces. And they kill everyone. Yeah. So if this would have been another ship that had children on it, they would have killed all the children. They want to kill. So would you consider them a good race of people? Yeah. They would have done that. Yeah, they shouldn't attack their own planet, but that's overkill too. You don't get to start attacking there. And we also explained why. They're probably like that because of everything that happened to them. We did talk about that. I know for a fact we talked about that. How if this was first contact for them, then they probably think all alien races are evil. Well, not only that, we also said too, maybe they wouldn't have done that. The crew didn't attack them either. Remember we said that. They would have just wanted to try to talk to them normally. But they didn't do that. So... You you didn't I don't know if you didn't listen to our episode or what, but we or you, you just took it that way. But if honestly, no. I truly think they're that way because of what the krill did to them. Yeah, and they see their enemy and they're going to take care of them because they know if we leave any of them alive, they're going to come back and get us. Yeah. So hey, I don't necessarily I, I don't really buy into that at all. They they're ugly, so they must be evil. Well, eh. I never said that. I I, I I mean we didn't even imply it. I don't yeah, think. I don't think I even implied that. No. You didn't get a star in your comment for that. You didn't get a heart because I I don't agree with that. Um. 
Again, uh, I am Bubbles, fly so high. Yeah, that's why I like the Elder Scroll elf race. They can be noble as Lord of the Rings elves, but also a colossal asshole, warmonging races, pieces of... <laughs> they're all they're always awesome. Argonian race, number one. They're the best. Uh, every other race in Morrowind Nor- is Elder Scrolls. Is we awful. haven't talked about that before. I love the Argonians. They're so cool. Their voices, assassins. I just love it. But um, that's that's our last comment. Um... I think this episode was that first uh, thought-provoking, more sci-fi yeah. episode. Hopefully, we get more of these. Um, Maybe he's building it, and we're going to start getting more, and we're just going to start turning them out. Um, the numbers are down. A little bit. But so, um, I, you know, being someone who likes this show, who wants to see it continue, I want to see more of these episodes. Stay tuned. Keep watching. Um, if... If you watch the episodes and you have something to say, come to our videos, go to other people's videos, leave comments, keep the fandom going. Yeah, we need this to important. do that. Yeah. It's a fun show. It's a, like that other person said, overall, it's it's more fun than anything right now. Yeah. Sci-fi wise. Every other sci-fi thing is a dystopian. Everyone's killing each other. Everyone's awful and horrible. But this is some light. But when McFarlane, before the first episode came out last season, said, there's a void to fill because no one's filling it and Next Generation felt it back then. Now I'm feeling it again. That's and I said. agree with that. I do too. So um, if you were a fan of the first season, you're feeling a little let down in season two, I, I, I say stick with it. You know, I'm not saying you have to do this or anything, but I think it's good enough to let it grow a little more. But man, that delay really stopped it, momentum. Why do they have such a long delay? That just is. I don't think Fox thought it was going to be a hit. They really did it. But um, yeah, keep the comments coming, guys. We love them. Even like how uh, uh, people disagreed what we said. Yeah. it's fine. I'll, I'll, we'll read them and we'll respond. And as long as we but can least, say something. But at least yours was thing saying, "Well, you guys were, you know, you guys are terrible." Well, you didn't say why. At least that guy told us something. Even oh, though yeah. I don't believe what he said, but. See, unlike our comments on our Discovery episodes, we get comments that are just like, just profanity about yeah. how dumb and stupid that, we are. That's, that's At least there was, there was a thing so we can have a conversation. Yeah, exactly. See, regardless of how anyone thinks or feels, I think we could always have a conversation. Yep. Especially in fandom and sci-fi, we can show other fandoms, this is how you have disagreements about yeah. episodes and characters and stories. You can still talk about them. Yeah, and also I like in the episode they talked about them on anything. They were uh, sending supplies to a planet. See, they do that They do too. little things too. Like, like that, a delivery yeah. ship. Yeah. That's what even more like, well, that's all we do lately. I want to do something fun. Well, that's part of being a union officer. But uh, yeah, uh, the next episode's tomorrow. So that okay, we'll have wait. that review up couple hours after the episode yeah, airs, try as fast as we get can. them up there and get the comments going. Let people know that we do these videos, that we take the time to read comments and interact with you guys because that, I think this is these are my favorite videos. Oh, these my aren't our most popular videos. But they're, they're better than the ones I have the most these, fun. These videos don't give us a lot of uh, monetization, but you know what? I have the most fun making these videos yep. because it's just like I, well, I'm back in high school talking with all my buddies about the last episode of D Space Nine. You know, oh, did you see when Cisco did this? Like, But I get to talk to... Tons and tons of people said it just four. Ah, uh, why couldn't these space have been around when the internet was around? That would have been amazing. Yeah, it would have been bigger than it was. Oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, definitely keep those comments coming in. We love every one of them. Agree, disagree. Hit us up on Twitter at C15Podcast. There's an email on the About oh. page. Leave them on the videos. But uh, thank you so yeah. much for commenting. I also even have a C15 uh, podcast on Facebook if you want to follow that too. Yeah, um, page. yeah. so check that out too. It's uh, we're, we're trying to you know build build the brand a little bit. But um, yeah. definitely uh, keep watching. Like the videos. Share them. I've been your host, Crimson Sin. Hey, the Team PCA. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. Crimson Sin here. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, sub, and share. Also, for the most up-to-date information about the podcast, follow us on Twitter at C15Podcast. Thank you.